Hi everyone, it's me Ace here yet again with another video and this is on the free to play game Genshin Impact. Now this review is only based on everything that is currently in the game as it's still being updated so please bear that in mind. So the story starts by introducing you to the two main characters who are called Aether and Lumine. Once you select your character the other one gets taken and thus you set out on a journey to save your sibling. Now there are a lot of story missions to start off with that are currently in the game, which is great, it gives you quite a chunk to be getting on with. However, after that it is not so great. At this point, the story goes downhill faster than China's economy. So, in terms of story, we have no story. I can't even begin to vent my frustration on this fact. I get that the game has updates being added, but for fuck's sake, add more of the story! While you get extremely bored of waiting for the main story, you can play the subsidiary stories. These are where the new characters are introduced and they have their own few missions related to their own stories. Now this is great, however very short lived as they don't take long to complete and when you do finish them it says to be continued. We already have one fucking story that needs to be continued, don't add more to that ever growing list. Naturally the more characters that get released we get access to more story related quests but these are far and few between each different one. Also, depending on the character will determine how much you like the story, so that is a downside as not everyone likes every character. I'd mention which characters I don't like, but I'm not going to do that as I can't be bothered to get into those discussions. Now, this is all I can really say about the story because there isn't a lot to go into, and I've forgotten most of what happened because of everything that I have to do in the bloody game. Story rating, as of the time of this review for me, is 2 out of 10. Now. Before anyone gets pissy, I'll say this. Yes, it's a low score, but I reiterate what I said at the beginning. This review is only based on everything in the game so far. If there was more story, it would probably have a different rating. Now, with the gameplay, there is a lot to discuss. So I won't be discussing everything that was in here, because there's a lot. And I also will not be discussing anything related to a specific event, as that would also add too much time. It's basically your standard RPG, but Chinese, so a CRPG, I guess. You start off with the default characters, and from there you can obtain more through the game's wishing system. Now, this being a gacha game means the more money you spend, the more wishes you get, which increase your chances of getting characters. I personally don't advise doing this, but everyone has their own preferences. You can get wishes through simply playing, but this obviously takes a lot longer than buying them. Each character has a specific element and you use your element abilities with your weapons to inflict a world of hurt onto unsuspecting enemies, which most of whom look like mutated furballs. With each character you can level up their talents and weaponry to inflict higher damage faster and the result of this is making enemies regret getting up in the morning, although the NPCs look like most of them have the same exact problem. Along with the talents you can earn artifacts which give you extra bonuses to kill more furballs and eventually the mini bosses you can find around the map. There are a variety of effects you can have which is great, however certain effects will only benefit certain characters. That said, you can have a fire character with bonus water damage if you really want to, but surely people aren't that stupid. Then again we are in 2021, some people are that fucking stupid. The open world exploration starts off amazingly well as you'll get taken in and always find new stuff to explore, but when you explore practically everywhere, you'll realise the map is so small you might as well be in a fucking fishbowl. You'll just be travelling to the same places for the most part. With all the travelling you'll be doing, you'll gain experience and adventure rank. Adventure rank is the game's way of basically telling you to bugger off and come back to certain activities because you're not high enough level to do this yet, even though this is primarily related to story quests. Domains and temples you'll need to be at certain levels to do, so you need to fight mini bosses to gain certain materials that characters need to ascend to higher levels. Now, this brings me to the worst part of the gameplay, the constant farming for more fucking resources. It isn't enough that there is a resin system in place and you need resin more than ever in this game. No, you need resin for practically everything. What. The. Fuck. That's right, everything you will need is an activity that requires resin. What this boils down to is when you run out of resin, you're far past fucked. You have to wait for it to recharge, which feels like an eternity. There are fragile resin, and you can use those to give 60 resin back immediately, but it won't go a long way. 
You can also use Prima Gems to get resin, but this isn't worth doing as it's better to save them for wishes. Now, obviously everyone who has or does play this will know I haven't mentioned everything. Well, that's because there would be way too much to talk about, and if I did mention everything, this would be a multiple part video to explain every single fucking mechanic. Now, onto the gameplay rating. I give it a 6 out of 10. It's a very enjoyable experience, but there are clear improvements that need to happen, like adding cross-region play. I can't give this game a monetary value, as it's free to download. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going back to farm because I'm always in need of more resources. Thanks for watching this video, hit that subscribe button, and have a great day.